Hello, one and all. This is Luckless Lovelocks, and welcome to Expeditions Rome, where we will fight with our party of Praetorians, guide our legion to victory, and choose how we will shape the future of Rome. I'd like to thank THQ Nordic and Logic Artists for the early copy to play with all of you. Now let's begin our adventure together. In the year of Lucius Licinius Lucullus, Rome was prosecuting several wars of self-defense, most notably in Greece, where Lucullus himself was commanding the legions. That's pretty much With luckless. With gaze directed at the provinces, few could have known that a seemingly inauspicious event in Rome would become the central fulcrum around which the fate of the Republic would turn. The paterfamilias of a venerable patrician house had passed away unexpectedly, and a senator by the name of Vitellius Scaevola had made a bid for the hand of his eldest child. His widow alone believed that Skyewala had poisoned her husband and now strove to take his place and claim his property through marriage. I'm not gonna be able to remember these Acting names. In secret, the widow arranged for her youngest child to be taken out of their villa in the dead of night and smuggled out of Rome. And here we are in the character creator. I am going to go through all of this and I'll show you the results on the flip side, everybody. Allow me to introduce you to Luckless Lovelocks Nautius. The naughtiest of the Luckless Lovelocks. We're going for a very tall, handsome, relatively generic looking <laughs> Roman man as our lead who's going to rule with an iron fist. To be honest with you, there isn't a ton of uh, character creation options, and there are some that don't really match the portraits very well. So I kind of tried to find one that uh, that did match. Like, I don't know how you could make this guy, because there's only three hair hairstyles also. This would be the closest, I guess, but there's no like curly hair or anything. So I went with, um, with this guy because I wanted to make someone really big and strong and whose like presence is going to overwhelm. Uh, his adversaries and friends for that matter to let the journey of luckless lovelocks Natius begin ah here we go so there's uh, rhetorical style each of these three perks unlocks unique dialogue options to persuade other people in different situations think about what kind of character you want to roleplay and choose your rhetorical style accordingly during the story you may get a chance to master a second technique so we've got ethos, the art of using the power of your authority or your abilities to get your way. This is probably what we're going to go with, but let's read the rest. Logos, the art of convincing someone with sound logical arguments and reasoning. I don't think we're going to be very logical, so that doesn't really work. Pathos, the art of winning people over using stirring rhetoric or emotional manipulation. That sounds interesting, but I think our character is all about the strength of his authority. Ah, how will history remember you? different difficulty sessions. I'm going to go with uh I'm going to go with hard. I like I like a bit of a challenge in these games. Uh Pompeius uh it says considered one of the greatest commanders of his time. Pompeius was a friend of Caesar's who opposed him in a bloody civil war. Caesar defeated him and he fled to Egypt where he was killed. On this setting your difficulties will be great, but your victories all the sweeter. We're not going to go with Iron Man, but I am going to go with Combat death enables permanent death of party members if they bleed out during combat. Be warned, if a story companion or your own character dies, it's game over. This is disabled non-story Praetorians can still die from untreated injuries. Oh, I wonder if uh, I can get you guys into the game. I'm actually not sure about that, but I'm not going to put Iron Man on for a variety of reasons, but I am going to play as though Iron Man is on. Just It's good to have uh, backup saves in case something happens i don't know you, you never know what kind of issues uh, a brand new game will have let's begin everybody unless there's something else to pick did you hear me domine your body is surely present but your mind seems somewhere else i'm sorry old friend i guess i'm still thinking about what happened i'm just stunned by the beauty of this sea look at how blue it is that doesn't sound like us I feel like I'm out of my depth. What will I do here? Nah, we're going to go with, I'm uh, still thinking about what happened. Our departure was very sudden, I know. But do not dwell on the past. Better to focus on what's coming at you. I asked the Triarchus how close we are to Lesbos, but uh, he would not give me a straight answer. Looks like we can go back through the conversation, which is nice. 
The sooner I can wet my blade, the better I'll feel. Oh, we've got a sword, too, in our portrait. That's perfect. You're not here to fight. Your mother wants you to be kept safe, not thrown into the front line. Will you check with Atriarchus? Hopefully he will give you a clearer answer. He told me his name is Geminus. Geminus. Ask the Triarchus Geminus how close you are to Lesbos. Maybe he will respond better to someone with real authority. My family is paying for this trip, after all. You were the authority of your ancestors well. I'm sure he'll give you what you want. You should also go and thank Quintus Aquilinus. I do believe he saved our lives with his timely appearance at the villa. Looks like we have a few questions to ask. Why are there so few passengers on this galley? Your mother paid Geminus handsomely to set off in great haste under cover of night. Two others did board with us, also bound for Lesbos. Young Gaius has been pacing impatiently over there, wearing grooves into the deck. There was a gladiator too, but I don't know where he went. We left so quickly, my mother and sister. Do not worry. The Witelius brothers have no reason to do them any harm. Besides, you cannot save them by worrying. It's like we have, an on the task ahead. we have an optional task to you. Thank uh, Quintius Aquilinus. I'm going to mispronounce all the names. I'm sorry. It's, it's going to happen. We're getting you out of Rome. Okay. Thank you for coming with me, Cineros. Cineros? Thank you for bringing me along. It will be wonderful to see my homeland again. Let's see if Geminus knows where we are. Goals. The quest markers point you towards your mandatory objectives, the red icon, and your optional objectives, the exclamation mark. Quest markers are only displayed for the currently tracked quests. When you have more than one quest, you can change which one you're tracking from the quest menu. Press J to open. Journal? Oh. Camera control. WSD. Okay. Uh, rotate the camera, which I can't do right now. Zoom in, zoom out. Press F to make the camera follow your character. Okay. What's following? We're moving it around. Ooh, everything seems to be nice and smooth. Kind of reminds me of uh, Divinity Original Sin 2, uh, where we start on a boat, right? I can't remember one now. Is there is there a boat in that too? <laughs> Quests. Okay. I don't know what that other... I guess that button just is like open the menu button. Main quest. Pirates on the Mediterranean. Narrowly escaping the scheming of... Uh, it was Wutelius. Uh, I guess the V is pronounced like a W. Your father's murderer. You have fled Rome to join your family friend, Consul Lucius... Lucinius Luculus. <laughs> That's a luscious name if I've ever seen one. In his campaign on Lesbos. Looks like we got 300 denarii. The denarius is a Roman... Denarii? I don't know how to pronounce that. Is it denaria or denarius? It's a Roman currency used to build upgrades and buy legion items. So we're going to get to like maintain a legion too, which is going to be really neat. And I think there's combat... Like Legion to Legion combat, actual wars, but we'll see as we play the game. I don't, I haven't been following a ton about this, but I have been excited for this for a while because I'm really in like a strategy game kick ever since I decided to play some uh, Crusader Kings 3 again. I've just been wanting to play a ton of strategy games. Slaves are used to construct and staff buildings in your Legion fort. Slaves that are assigned to an upgrade will no longer be available as a resource. Rations used to nourish your party and legions. Each Praetorian consumes one ration every eight hours. And medicine is used to treat injured Praetorians while you travel. Keep your medicine well stocked or your wounds may fester. Very neat. Okay, so F to follow. And we just left click to move around, it looks like. Can I you run? You found your sea legs quickly, Domine. Aye. Literally inside you. We have someone to talk to over here. Gaius. Okay, he's walking away from us. You handle the sea better than most. I'm glad. Centurio, I want to thank you for your timely arrival at my villa. 
The timing was fortunate, but there is no need to thank me. The Consul sent me to get you. Please, call me Kaiser, if it's not too familiar. And you can call me Lovelocks. With all due respect, I'd better not. Oh. Is there some kind of rule about what you can call someone? Not Aquilinus? My subordinates call me Kenturio. My superiors call me Aquilinus. My friends call me Kaiser. Jeez. I can hardly remember one name. Can we go over the plan? Our departure was far too hasty to discuss our course of action. Ah, she did not keep you apprised. Your mother has secretly been making arrangements with the Consul. You are to join his command staff as Tribunus. What are the duties of a tribun Tribunus? You will have very little responsibility. The Tribunus of Allegio assists the Legatus while they learn how to command a military organization. You will not see combat, nor will you make any important decisions. You'll be uh. safe, as your mother wanted. I'm not here to be kept safe. I'm here to build my reputation and make powerful friends so I may return home and reclaim my family. That is certainly not what your mother wants for you, but I admire your courage. Talk to the consul about it. One word of advice. I know Lucullus is a friend of your family, but remember, he is the consul, elected by the people to rule all of Rome. It's best if you don't act too familiar with him in front of his men. What is your relationship with him? For many years, I was the Primus Pellis of Legio Prima Italica, which he commands. He needed someone he could trust to get you out of Rome and keep you safe. That is a... a Primus Pellis of Legio Prima Italica? <laughs> that is... That is a mouthful. Will you be returning to your position when we reach Lesbos? That position has already been filled by one of my Centuriones. A good man, easily up to the task. My job now is to watch your back and help you settle into your new life. I'm honored to have you with me. Happy to be at your service. Have you talked to any of the other passengers? I had a brief talk with that gladiator who boarded before us, just to make sure he won't give us any trouble. He seems to have vanished, though. The young man over there, Gaius, is apparently the nephew of the other consul, Marcus Aurelius Cotta. He's here to become a tribunus as well. You should talk to him if you haven't already. I'm sure you'll have much in common. I should talk to the Triarchus. I would, I would have pronounced all those words wrong if I hadn't heard I them. heard he's running from a senator who wants him dead. Shh, keep your voice down. Yeah, I can hear you. Salve. Uh, salve, salve to you as well. Salve? Or was it salve? Uh... I haven't oh i guess we could we should say we should be i, th I feel like we're kind of honorable though even though we want to rule with an iron fist uh Salway, i don't believe we have been properly introduced my name is luckless Natius lovelocks it is a pleasure i am gaius julius caesar ah this is a familiar person in history well met this is all quite new to me mind if i ask you a few questions not at all but keep in mind, I'm not the most experienced soldier either. Where are you from? I was born in Rome, but they say my family is from Alba Longa. And why did you join the Legion? That's a long story, my friend. Suffice to say, the powers that be are not fond of me. I have decided that staying in Rome could be, shall we say, hazardous to my health. <laughs> We're just like digging right into this. How many wars did you fight in? To be honest, this will be my first proper battle. I did study a lot, though, and therefore I am well versed in matters of strategy and tactics. This is my first military assignment. Do you have any advice? <clears throat> if you don't play an important part, you will be torn apart. My father used to say. I guess that was his way of telling me to be brave and hopefully not stupid. Uh, wh why they, Gaius? Uh, we shall talk later. <laughs> it sounds like such a moron. <laughs> I don't really know how to properly uh, pronounce these words. I'm so sorry. What is he looking for? He's been like this all morning. Is it, can I walk faster? Mm -hmm. Uh, Save, uh... Gem Gem Geminus, wasn't it? What? 
Yes, Geminus. So, uh, I'm a little preoccupied. I will remind you that until we reach our destination, you work for me. You have been paid to take me and my contingent to Lesbos within a certain time. When will we arrive? Forgive me, I did not intend any disrespect. We have only a short time left to go. If not for the lack of wind, we would be there already. But I will push the rowers harder. Wait. What is it? A ship. They're headed straight towards us. They're gonna ram. Oh, shh. Get your father's weapons. Let's see if you can actually fight. It's a fighting tutorial. Yeah, I'm preparation fine. phase. Form up. Let's get these pirates off our ship. Before combat begins, you will often have time to organize your Praetorians into a formation. Then in an area highlighted in blue, simply click one of your Praetorians and click where you want to place them. Uh, it's generally a good idea to put your heavy infantry in front and your archers and support behind them. When you're ready, click the end turn button or press N to begin. Okay, so what do we have? We've got our cells. We're a patrician. Uh, movement 8. Morale immune. That sounds good. Bludgeoning resistance 0. Piercing resistance 0. Slashing resistance 1%. Fire resistance 29%. Poison resistance 0%. Okay. Ordering characters. During combat, characters can take actions in any order. For example, you could move a ranged character a few hexes towards an enemy, shoot, and then move back again. You're also free to swap between characters during your turn. For example, one character can move, another character can move and attack. And then the first character can attack as well. So, okay, so it's very free form. You can even move or attack with a character while another character is still moving. Try it out. So let's put our cells kind of in the middle here. And Queso is uh, heavy. So you should be up front. What does it say for him? Movement four. So it doesn't move as fast. Morale 40. I guess because we're the main character, we just. Our morale is unlimited. Uh, main hand base damage three, three to five, off hand base damage two to five. Bludging resistance, piercing resistance, and slashing resistance 8%, fire resistance 25. Status effects. Strong. For each stack, 25% of the character's shield strength maximum is restored at the beginning of their turn. One stack is lost every time the shield takes a hit. Okay. And then we've got Cineros, who support morale 50. So you should probably be like back here. And we've got Caesar, who's an archer. So maybe put Caesar here. We'll put ourselves maybe like here. Scenarios here. They can move four. One, two, three, four. I have no idea how this is all going to play out. Maybe we should do this. They'd have to go through him, though, to attack Cineros, right? Okay. Attacking. To attack an enemy, first select which skill to use. Each skill cannot be used more than once per turn. Many skills require your action point orange diamond to use and some have limited charges red square per encounter so maybe we start caesar so this preparation phase oh no turn one of round one fend off the pirate boarding party arcus worn bow four to seven base damage so these are the two different weapons we have equipped we've got an aimed shot Deflected by shields. Applies harried to enemies. I don't know what that does. Uh, I guess it means minus 10 to all resistances, minus 25% damage? On our attack, I guess? No. 
it would apply that to the enemy, so they would all do, or they would, they would do minus 25% damage, okay. Crippling shot, weapon skill. Four to seven piercing damage, deflected by shields again, and crippled, minus 50% movement. Interrupt, interrupt active skill. Six to 11 piercing damage. Knock an arrow and wait for an enemy to move within 120 degree cone in front of you. Then shoot that enemy. So it's kind of like an overwatch to use an XCOM term. 12 hexes deflected by shields. Applies interrupting to self. Character will shoot the first enemy who moves into their vision cone. Let's try a crippling shot on this guy. Cannot see target. Oh, because I'm in the way. Interesting. I did not consider that. So maybe I should move up with this guy. We got the Gladius and the Scrotum. I mean, Scutum. Scutum? <laughs> Shield strength two. Critical damage one. Base damage two to five. C skills. Slash weapon skill. Also hits uh, any enemy on the target's left for half the damage. Affects multiple targets. Brace. Begin, uh, regain two stacks of strong. Apply strong to self. Okay. So that's what was applied to him. Shield push. Shoot if I bludgeoning damage. Push the target one hex away if there is a free space behind him. Requires minimum one shield strength. And then slash. Now, can I just click slash and we'll walk up? I guess, is it suggesting I move there? Let's see what happens when we just slash this guy. Three damage. And it looks like that's it. Looks like, and it looks like there's some uh, range weapons, like grenades or something. And we can do slash punch. I'm going to move here. And we're going to shoot with Gaius. I think I'm going to do an aim shot. Status effects. Any status effect applied to a character will show up in their tooltip. The number indicates the remaining duration in combat rounds, whilst the bars indicate how severe the effect is. Status effects can be positive if they're blue, negative if they're red, or neutral if they're black. To get more information about a status effect, press the C status effect key to open a list of the statuses currently affecting the character. Now, what can we do? I should have checked to see what support abilities we had. Logistics. Area of effect. Three hex radius. Affects multiple targets. Applies coordination, coordinated to allies. Plus two movement maximum. Okay. So I could move up to here. And that'll be our our uh, action, right? Because we have one action. We can do reach, which is just an attack, and it shreds armor. Or we can do concussive strike. Armor shred applies weakened to enemies, minus 50% damage. Okay. Punch. Two to three or two to five? I think I will... Uh, let's see, he's got th uh, three... He's got... Does he have three out of eight health remaining? 100% chance of success. Two to five health damage. So I might kill him. We only did two damage. Can he get in there and hit him? Yeah, okay, that's considered two hexes. It's not ray adjacent. Four to seven health damage. Damn. Boom! Untrained enemies. Whenever you kill or incapacitate an untrained character, such as a civilian or militia, in this case, a, a gym knights, the character who dealt the final blow will regain their attack action. Cool. Remember that any given skill can only be used once per turn. 
and action points cannot be saved for the next turn. Try to finish off any untrained enemy with a character who will still have a skill left to use in that same turn. Un I wonder why they, why are they called untrained enemies? Is it because they haven't taken an action yet? So I could use logistics. Uh, and actually, I can move Caesar up, right? I guess I should move him up all the way so he can be ready for the next attack. I can just click anywhere to confirm. Yeah. And then, so we have nothing left except for movement, I guess. Let's block off this spot. Who has the most HP? I can't really tell. Oh, that blue must be armor. Oh, 16. Okay, it says here. Two armor and 16 HP. So I'll move you there. 14 and 14. I think that's fine. Let's end our turn. Oh, we have more friendly units. Okay, good. Including this guy. Ouch. Glancing blow. Six damage. Damn. And they're dead. Blocked it. Oof. Where's that gladiator who boarded with us? Up there. Oh, yeah. Never underestimate the value of an impressive entrance. Bestia. That was pretty badass. Recover two shield strength. So let's go with a slash, it's gonna, which is going to hit both of them. Oh, see status effects. Incapacitating this character will restore the action point of the attacker. Right. So this is kind of interesting because I would probably want to do this twice, right? Hit both of these guys and then maybe hit both of these guys. So maybe I want to do some damage first. you deadly with that thing. Or damage. I've lived other lives before this one. Cineros. Talking shit. So this might take him out. Three to five. Action restored. And then we can move over here. Oh, attack of opportunity. If you move out of a hex that is adjacent to an enemy, wielding a melee weapon, they will get an attack of opportunity. Watch for a red arrow along your path to see if you'll get attacked. Each character can make one attack of opportunity per turn. So this guy can't do that anymore. Aim shot, and then we could do another. Oh, I can't use the same. Uh, right, OK. I forgot about that. I can't use the same skill twice in a fight. I guess we'll use strong then. That's, yeah, that'll make your shield stronger, just whacking it. <laughs> and then I can move away so that uh, Luckless could, could do that attack. Can we move through people? Let's move back. Oh, I forgot about the attack of opportunity. <laughs> I can't. Glancing blows. Weapons can deal one of three different types of damage. Slashing, piercing, and bludgeoning. This is a good time to make a lot of mistakes, though. Uh, and bludgeoning. Armor and helmets grant resistance against some of these damage types. Whenever a character is hurt, the resistance is... Uh, determine the percentage chance that the attack is reduced to a glancing blow. Glancing blow deals only 25% damage and does not apply any further status effects of the skill or weapon used to attack. Okay. 
If you find your attacks reduced to glancing blows, look at what damage types your enemies are less, least resistant to, and switch to a weapon or a skill that deals that type of damage. We still haven't... We took a little bit of damage there. It's not the end of the world, though. Gets the actions back, so I can punch this guy. We've got the gladiator in the back, who has a Pujo, which is a dagger. And it does, it generates two focus, makes two attacks each at half of normal damage. And we've got a Hasta, which is three to five damage. Precise Stab is uh, three to five piercing damage, generate one focus. Cannot be blocked or resisted. Already read that. And then we've got Shiv, 1 to 3 piercing damage. Make a quick offhand attack at half damage, which does not cost an action point. But we need 3 focus. Okay. 3 to 6 piercing. This guy's already attacked. So I'll be able to kill anyone. But let's generate the two focus. Actually, I might be able to kill this guy. Five of eight. So I'll take an attack of opportunity if I move through here. Same if I move through here. So I'm, I'm, I need to attack one of these guys unless I want to take an attack of opportunity. So 10 or eight. Let's attack this guy. Cannot reach targets. I guess I had to move. Oh, zero of two targets chosen. We're just going to choose him twice. Cool. So maybe this guy will take him out. Now he decided to run by. I don't know why. Bleeding. Oh, damn. Oh, we wanted to taste combat, right? Maybe I shouldn't have played on hard. <laughs> we got our shield back. So let's go with a... Um, See if we can take this guy down. Five damage. Oh, he got knocked down. Wait, is he? So I knocked him over. Untrained, incapacitating this character will restore the action point. Unable to act, incapacitate, unable to act or move. Will bleed out unless tended to. Okay. So he's just down. That's neat. Two to five, hundred percent chance of success. Or three to five. And this guy's down too. Let's see if we can take him out. Oh, that's a rock! I thought I had my guy. I thought I had my guy selected. That's okay though. Okay. So incapacitated is different from just straight up dead. So you don't get our action back. I don't think I have to think too hard about this. Shiv him to finish him off. And then let's get our archer into this, Caesar. Aim shot at their archer. Three damage, okay. So 
still have my action. Oh, because we took a guy out. That's why. Nice. So if I double click, it'll go to them. So is that okay? So that's like a second movement. Let me just try this out. That so I've used my second action to move. Okay, I understand how that works now. Only one oh. remains. This was easy. Yeah. That'd be great if he <laughs> killed the one guy. I think we should leave the kill to Luckless, right? So I will take an attack of opportunity if I move here. So it's not like Dungeons and Dragons where you can like move around the enemy and not take an attack of opportunity. The only time you take an attack of opportunity is if you move like away from their uh, range. Get in there, Luckless! Punch him to death! Yeah! <laughs> Victory achieved! <laughs> El Nauticus Lovelocks. No one was injured. Excellent. Not bad for a first fight. Asshole, barbarians. <sighs> the Triacus run us straight into the pirate ambush stream. Allow me to execute him right here and right now. This traitor must be walking with them. Uh, we're sailing to join a war against pirates. It's not so surprising that we should be attacked by pirates on our way. Don't be naive. This was no random attack. They were out for blood. It is quite unusual for pirates to attack any ship, let alone a heavily armed Roman galley. They prefer to attack lightly defended coastal towns instead. It's less risky and more profitable. Well, let's go talk to the man. Uh-oh. Ah, now we're controlling everyone. That's cool. Is there any reason to, to like, look around? Doesn't look like it. There's no loot. Geminus, you dared us into a trap. What do you have to say for yourself? I had nothing to do with it, I promise. They came out of nowhere. Silence! You utter nonsense! By Mars, it is the sea! How can anyone come from Rome? We cannot execute a man based on no evidence. Besides, we need our Triarchus to make it safely ashore. Huh. What do you say, kid? What do you think we should do? Ha! <laughs> Um, why do you want him dead, Gladiator? We are close to our destination, and we can reach it without him. If there is a possibility that he is working with the enemy, we cannot risk to let him live. I guess he... Mercy, doubt, hesitation. These are all openings that the enemy can exploit to kill you. This man's value to us is far less than the threat he may pose. Gaius, if pirates don't attack ships, as you say, why would these ones make an exception? We are, many of us, important people on our way to join the action against Lesbos. Is it not conceivable that the rebels heard of us? The Kingdom of Pontus is known to sponsor pirates, to harass and weaken Rome. I do not believe we have any reason to suspect our Triarchus of colluding with them. This is really important to the kind of character that uh, we're going to play in the future. He needs to be executed! No tolerance for failure. Very well. Let us hope you will hold yourself to the same standard. Hmm. I am bound by honor and duty. No Roman would dare ignore these. Agreed. And you had better remember this. Or I certainly will. Oh! <laughs> no, I had no way of knowing. Please! 
I told you! Keep silent! Oh shit! Rowers! Up to tempo! <laughs> Keep your eyes open! Oh, I didn't see who approved! A couple of people approved and one disapproved. Uh, character creation class. Triarius, the third line of a Roman legion can reduce the effectiveness of enemies and improve the performance of their allies. Subclasses medics, heal their teammates and remove negative effects. Flag bearers control the battlefield by buffing allies and moving enemies. Destroyers deliver devastating attacks that damage enemy armor. Ah, and there's four classes. There's the Princeps. Heavy armor and sturdy tower shields give Rome's frontline infantry unparalleled survivability. Hint, the Princeps is the most straightforward class to play. Uh, defenders focus on survivability and protecting allies. Vanguards charge into the fray and excel at using their shield as a weapon. Veterans lock down enemies and resist enemy attempts to do the same to them. There's the Veles or Veyes. The speed and unpredictability of the light infantry allows them to cause great chaos among enemy ranks. We've got assassins have good mobility and high single target damage. Duelists are evasive fighters that dodge and weave between attacks. Brawlers are versatile fighters that excel at penetrating enemy lines. This is the one I'm definitely not really interested in, although at close range, yeah. Hmm. I like Destroyer. Death Blow. Four to seven piercing damage, one armor shred. Plus 50% damage against a target who is stunned, stuck, knocked down, or sundered. Uh, heavy Lorica Hamata. Regular strong armor. Armor one. Princeps Helmet. Uh, five, all resistances. And four to seven base damage on the pike. So I like Destroyer. Brawler. Brawler's pretty cool. Tactical advance. Applies tactical to self. The character will not incur attacks of opportunity. That's pretty neat. One uh, armor, four resistance. Increased crit chance. Gladius and Pujo. So this is similar to the gladiator, what the gladiator is, right? The, oh, sorry, that, they're a duelist because they have Shiv. Or we can go big, big boy. Heavy armor, two. But we move more slowly. All resistance is six. Has to. Maybe Vanguard seems pretty good, too. Minus 10 morale to all enemies within range. Area of effect, two hex radius. Uh, I like Vanguard. I like the idea that our presence demoralizes the enemy. Wait, hold to unlock. Oh, choose starting skill. All right, let's do Vanguard. I like this. I like big, brawny, lots of armor, survivable. We get in there, we demoralize, and then we kill. Act one, Asia Minor, first century BC. Luculus Legion Camp on the island of Lesbos. Gentlemen, welcome to Lesbos, the pearl of the Mediterranean. <laughs> An ugly nest of pirates. An impenetrable fortress of pirates, more like. With an infinite food supply thanks to the strength of their fleet. 
We shall find a way to limit this infinite supply then. You think like an Imperator, Gaius? All right, people. This is Lucullus' war camp, the heart of our operations in this territory. You have been seaborne for a long time now. I suggest you walk it off. See the things you have to see, and meet the people you have to meet. The Consul waits in the command tent. Don't be too late if you don't want to see him angry. I need to talk to Lucullus uh, when you're ready to proceed. I keep wanting to, like, highlight my character. Oh, that's cool. I like that effect. Party management. The screen shows the values that affect each character's performance as well as their experience points and their personality traits. Experience is gained from completing quest objectives or erecting milestones on the world map. There's a world map too. Love it. Combat stats. These are the character's combat stats. The values shown here include all bonuses from the character's skills and items. Hover over each stat to get a description of what it does. I'm hovering. <laughs> I guess we're still in the tutorial, so I can't do that now. Perks and personality. A character's personality traits determine which of your words or actions will cause the character to gain or lose approval for you. Perks give bonuses when assigned to certain tasks in the camp or when commanding the Legion in battle. Okay. Armor. The damage of every incoming attack is reduced by the target's armor value before any health is lost. Armor does not apply to damage blocked by shields, and critical damage bypasses it as well. Pardon me. Successful attacks reduce the target's health by some value. When health reaches zero, the character's incapacity will begin to bleed out. A character can move one hex for each point of movement they have. Movement is determined by what kind of armor a character wears. All of a character's movement points are replenished at the beginning of their turn. We've got shield strength, the amount of incoming damage that can be blocked by the shield each turn. Under normal circumstances, shield strength is fully replenished at the beginning of a character's turn. It's a good idea. Oh, and I can change the names? Oh, I was kind of hoping I could change the names of these guys too, so I could bring in my lovers into, uh, into the game. That's okay. I was saying it's a good idea to read this stuff now because we're going to be playing this game for a while and uh, it's important to know the stats before we get started. Well, that's obvious. Space damage. This, I think this stuff's pretty obvious. Armor cap. Maximum possible armor value. Armor is capped by the armor cap stat. Opportunity action so you can get more. Okay. But we can change our name anytime we want to, I guess. Quinctius. Loyal. I gotta get some badass armor like him. Personality. Hedonistic. Likes partying, reveling, and having a good time. Will typically disagree with stoic characters. Skeptical. Likes it when you question or disregard the gods. Will typically disagree with superstitious characters. Honest. Values, openness, and truthfulness. We'll typically disagree with cunning characters. Constitution. A strong constitution downgrades the deterioration risk of any untreated injury by one severity level. Agreeable. An agreeable person reacts twice as strongly to all actions that they approve of. Has one opportunity action. Armor cap 7. Cinderos is conciliatory, likes actions that display open-mindedness to other peoples and cultures. We'll typically disagree with warmongering characters. Uh-oh. <laughs> I think we might be a warmonger. Humble, approves when you show awareness of your shortcomings. We'll typically disagree with arrogant characters. We might be arrogant too. I don't think we're going to get along well with him. <laughs> but he is devoted. Sexist, dislikes when you treat the opposite gender as equals. Hmm. Self-treatment perk. Healers with this perk can heal themselves at a penalty to treatment speed. So you're a healer? Yes. Doctor. Doctor can treat lacerations, punctures, trauma, and fracture injuries. Bestia. Is opportunity action one, armor cap seven. How come my armor cap's so low? 
Honest. Okay, we saw that before. Arrogant. <laughs> Likes it when you assert your superiority over others. We'll typically agree with humble characters. Or disagree, sorry. So we're gonna we're gonna be besties with bestia. Warmongering values aggressive words and actions. Prefers never to shy away from a fight. We'll typically disagree with conciliatory characters. A recruiter, a talented recruiter, will dramatically increase the chance of new recruits, matching the level of skill of the legatus. Constitution downgrades the deterioration risk. We had that on Quintius. Yeah. The skill screen is where you purchase class skills and assign those skills to your hotbar. Here you can see how many unspent skill points you have. Passive skills have a round icon. Active skills have a square icon. Active skills must be assigned to the skill bar to be used during combat. And we unlocked... Frighten. Zero unspent points. Oh, I see. We can still grab stuff from Defender and Veteran if we want to. No one has any points. Inventory. All unequipped items currently in your possession show up here. Got filters. Equipment slots. Click an item to automatically equip it in the right slot. Okay. Pretty standard RPG stuff. I don't think we have anything to equip though, right? Triage. This is the triage menu where you can treat injured Praetorians to prevent their untimely demise. Do not have any injured Praetorians at the moment. Excellent. Go to quests. Trial by fire. You have arrived on the shores of Lesbos to meet with Consul Lucius Lucinius Lu, Luculus. Luc, it's Luculus, right? <laughs> he was a friend of your family. Find and talk to Luculus when you are ready to proceed. I love it that we almost have the same name. We're both luckless. I don't think I could just talk to random people, though. It's pretty cool. Can I go up ladders? Doesn't look like it. This guy just digging in the dirt? <laughs> Does Thermos seem like he knows what he's doing to you? Him and his whole legion seem like they haven't the faintest clue. Is there anyone in these tents? Nice. Can't go out here. Practice dummies. I guess because there's no other side things, all we can do is just go to the main. Saw a gripper harassing that old service with the limp again. That small dicked bully. Did you tell the Prefectus? He won't do anything about it. A gripper is connected back home. One day that man is going to fall out of a watchtower to his death. It'll be tragic. Don't joke about that kind of thing. It's like we have to just go to the main quests. Okay. Ooh, all the tents in the background. This is not going to work as long as the rebels keep receiving supplies by sea. 